Hi, it's Darren here from Art by Darren, welcoming you to another Art Start Mixed Media Art class. Today I am going to attempt to make a pottery head with a, oops, <laughs> with a, uh, a pot on top so that I can put cactuses or something in, in my garden. So we're just going to use this hat head, you can get these from my milliners and uh, some terracotta air dry clay that I just got from Amazon. Let's get started. make up a slurry and just push some wet clay into those marks to fill those up. day I found a few more cracks <clears throat> I did that process again I've just I'll just show you because I did it on fast forward and you couldn't see anything really could you so let's get in a little bit closer you can see there's just a tiny little crack here so I've just got the I'm already wet that and I'm just gonna push the clay in with my thumb 
and then just kind of feather it out like that and there's a tiny little hairline on there so here's that slip I made yesterday so you can see now it's kind of like that it's quite like thick and I can just paint that on in that crack there dry again <clears throat> I think because of the nature of <clears throat> the foam um, because you're sort of grabbing it and then and moving it and grabbing it 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 bends so I think that's why there's I'm getting this cracking if anybody else knows why I haven't used this stuff on this kind of scale before <clears throat> when I used to go to sculpture class it was with um, clay that went into the kiln so those cracks that I had in her she, she would have exploded if it went into the kiln as when you do this in clay you would hollow you would make a frame and then keep sort of the whole inside of it hollow so I'm gonna leave the polystyrene in there when this is dry I'm gonna turn it over and put a heavy base on it to keep it firm while it's outside so it doesn't get blown over by the wind because it's still a bit I mean, it's not too bad it's pretty heavy but I'll show you what I did yesterday too so she's got these little flowers and a bird that's what that is <laughs> little flowers and leaves and then I just put some little Early bits on. I don't know whether we're gonna add some more of those or not. I haven't given her any ears, so we'll see. But I'm I'm waiting for her to dry so that I can get in here and shape the face a little bit better. She's looking very lumpy and neck's a little lumpy here. So once uh, she's dry, of course she can sand her with a bit of fine grit sandpaper on. Like a painting foundation on there, you can see I've put some on there as well. I want to reshape the lips and her nose a little bit, but I think she looks okay. First time I've done sculpturing, god, 14 years, 15 years or something. So I thought what I'd do as well is uh, give you a little project for a f if it's your first time using air dry clay, something simple. So start off with. Um, just a plastic piece of paper. Uh, the reason we use this is so that you can pick it up and sort of peel the clay off. I got all these kinds of uh, tools and everything from Over the Rainbow, which um, is a polymer clay site. Um, we use the same tools, whether it's clay or polymer clay or air dry clay or paper clay. Really they do have different properties so so when you're working with clay you want to get all the air bubbles out there's a technique called wedging where you get large you've probably seen that large clumps of clay and you whack it down <laughs> that's not big enough of course but you sort of whack it down and push all the air out and fold it until it's got all the air out so let's make uh, Let's make a little, a little jug. Let's see if there's enough clay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll take some of that off. <clears throat> I've been using the brayer. <laughs> Just because I'm not going to use my pastry wooden oh, spoon. I said wooden spoon My, uh, rolling pin on this you really shouldn't cross contaminate your art tools with your cooking tools okay now this is a great little tool it's quite sharp though so you gotta be careful with it see it's got a it's a blade <laughs> I'm just gonna cut 
Let's make it square. Yeah, hang up. Anybody else's iTunes just turn on by themselves? That freaks me out sometimes, especially in the middle of the night. I've got your phones in. Okay. So I'm just going to bend that around. So you've got to treat this stuff really gently. Pinch it together. I'm just pinching it together all down the side. Like so. Now, hmm. way too narrow, isn't it? just to give you something to push your thumb against you can see my nails have got into it everywhere one of the reasons I didn't take up pottery full time was I need to cut my nails <laughs> I like my nails okay you got to be really gentle with this now all those cracks down there just get a bit of water smooth that out Bottom flat. And then I should have really put this back in the bag straight away. It dries out because it's air dry clay. Right, so let's make the bottom of this. Ding it to make sure it doesn't stick. Get up easier again. Just mark the bottom so that it will join easier. Stand that up. I didn't mention I'm making a little vase for my refrigerator. It's going to cut it a little bit bigger <clears throat> so I can smooth it. Let's score this as well. I was going to put a handle on, but I don't know. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. Would you put a handle on this or not? Uh, it kind of 
looks cute. Okay, I agree with you. I'll put a handle on it. Again, you can see, just cross hatching where I'm going to put the handle and making sure that this is really smooth before I put it on. Actually, I might get a new piece. And as I said, I'm going to put this wrapped up as soon as I finish here. I've got a piece of bag. This goes in and seal it until I want to use it again. Or you could wrap it in cling film, whatever you've got, really. Just make sure it's airtight. Making our sausage. scoop on the end it makes it really easy for just grabbing a tiny bit of clay and pushing it to join it on and it's going to start collapsing it so I'm going to do I mean I could just wait till it's dry and add this you can add clay when it's dry as long as you wet the area Attach things well, like so. I'm just using that paintbrush as something to push up against the inside. You shouldn't get all the way around and attach it. Now the pressure I'm using on this is really light, like think about touching a baby's face, how softly you would touch that, that's how gentle you've got to touch clay, I mean, not when you're sort of rolling it out and pushing it onto there, but when you've got this kind of thing, you want to be really gentle, <clears throat> I'm just going to get a bit of slip, I could have put a bit of slip there as well yeah, I get it. okay well I hope that's gonna stay there <laughs> okay we'll see what happens it's a tiny little jug it's gonna be for my air plants got my fridge or lavender you know all those kinds of things there we go yeah, uh, another way you might have done this in school is using little rings and joining those together like that scoring the top and you get rid of slip Okay, I'm going to move that so I don't do that again. 
joins in the same spot. So I joined it, this one went there. So this one I'm going to join in another place. Like so. And then you build up. It's a good way to go. If you're just starting out, it's good with kids as well. They can usually roll a sausage. And then you get these lovely wonky pots. You can start them as well by making a little spiral. Like so. Hang on. I'll just wait that so it sticks to itself. Like that. Spiral like that. Mm, you're cute. <laughs> and then you can build that up with your sausages. Again, so it's it slips, score, press it together basically. I'm scoring that again. There we go. Let's see, is that big enough? Sure. And we can score that. Turn upside down because I'd already scored it. And it probably needs to be. It fits. Okay. You've got a little bowl. And then you can just pinch it. That's why it's called a pinch pot. Well, it's not really. This is this is a coil pot. <laughs> some coils. But then get a slip. You can wet that. Oh, and then to smooth it, you can leave the coils if you like, as long as it's joined together properly. Fine. You'll find out as it's drying whether it's joined together properly or not. <laughs> You'll get big cracks like I did. And now I've got a name my statue, so anybody got any ideas? And she's got a crown, so she's the queen. And I am going to add some, you know, I was thinking of adding some copper to her. I like the terracotta colour, I'm going to leave that. But I've got some small squares of copper, thinking just to sort of accentuate her moon. She's like the moon goddess Hathor, which was um, ancient, ancient Egypt, I think. And I could spend a whole lot of time fiddling with this, but it really was just a demonstration to show you the different ways you can work with clay. So give it a go. And show me, tag me on Instagram and show me what you made. I'd love to see it. We can share our ideas. Okay. I'm going to say I made the slip <clears throat> I'm just getting all the scrap pieces of clay and just putting them in an airtight container with a little bit of water and then you don't waste any of it like so <laughs>
place onto my moon goddess. And what I did was just roll out a piece about a centimetre thick and then trim it so it was about that wide so that I had clay that I could push up. And you'll see. <clears throat> and I'm just pushing that up around the bottom. What I didn't realise was that this clay, I had to use the different clay, the DAS clay, and it is a darker colour. So you can see my neck there, where I just pushed it up. It's a little darker than her face. So I've got to decide now whether I'll carry that through over her whole face. I mean, <clears throat> I've been sanding and it's not quite dry yet. So I'm going to leave it another day or two. And I'll show you what happens when you sand. That kind of mess. It gets everywhere. <laughs> but here's our little um, here's our little jug. So what I thought I'd show you is how I'm going to finish this off. I've got uh, a magnet, or two magnets actually that I've sort of joined together. It's that, that thin magnet stuff. So I'm going to put that together. I'll pick a side, probably that side. And then I'm just going to attach this to the back here with some quick hold craft glue. Um, this is very similar to E6000. That's it there. That's it right down. There we go. And I'll also attach her moon and the um, heart that I've just cut out of this very thin copper. And just sweeten it a little bit to make it have a bit of texture. And I've done the same thing for her moon. Just like that. This stuff's really easy to cut out with a pair of scissors. And I've just formed it on there. I'll glue that on with E6000 or this quick hard glue. So I'm going to use this gloss varnish. It's a spray varnish. You need to shake it really well before you use it. Uh, I'm using this in front of an open window. I should put my fan on really as well. Because it stinks. If you I saw before when I used this last in one of our collage pictures. <laughs> I nearly choked, let's see if that happens again. So I'm just going to leave it lying down there. Short quick sprays. You see it darkens the clay to start with, which means it's penetrating. I can't see a thing. There we go. So you can see it's darkening the clay, but that will dry off. So I can get this little one to stand up. There you go. Tap it up. Blow it over. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, there she goes. Okay. What I should have done is put it on the paintbrush. <laughs> I'm gonna stay with you.